So we are going to talk today about uh, enterprise VR, but really how it's uh, being used for collaboration and, and looking at kind of the practical elements uh, today and where we can go in the future. So uh, I am Amy Peck. I am the founder and CEO of Endeavor VR. We are a strategy and consulting firm working primarily with Fortune 1000 companies on really just leveraging this technology and building out uh, you know, successful XR deployments with development resources, product roadmap, platform partners, a lot of those that you'll see in the expo hall. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the enterprise use cases. If you've seen a number of the tracks here and some of the keynotes, um, we, we all know kind of what they are, but the reason I included this slide, it's looking a little odd on my screen, but um, I included this slide just to really show that any company and enterprise can utilize this technology successfully. Uh, and, and in each one of these verticals, there are myriad opportunities to increase productivity. I mean, I love uh, Jay Kim from Upscale talking about how, you know, improving uh, the time spent on a task by 30%. I mean, these are incredible numbers, and we're going to be seeing a lot more of these kinds of numbers coming through in the future as we're collecting all of this data. So as far as collaboration, you know, what does that really look like? So when you think of VR, you think of this sort of solitary experience. You're going into VR for a specific purpose. You're going in to learn something. You're going in to be entertained, to do something specific. And then so the next version of that is the shared experience. You have multiple people with multiple headsets all looking at the same piece of entertainment or whatever it is. But then where this crosses over into collaboration is the shared interactive experience. And you, know, you hear a lot about presence in VR. You know, what this means is, is, is really having the sense that you are in this environment and you are interacting with the people who are with you in that environment. And even though avatars now are not sort of you know, perfect photorealistic replicas of us, they, we're still able to identify the people we're talking with and it feels like a real experience. So, Again, back to the practicality. What are ways that we can use VR for collaboration today? So virtual boardroom or meeting room is, is you know, everybody's you know, got too many meetings, we're overscheduled. Uh, traveling to and from meetings is, is a, you know, a time burn. This is a way for people to collaborate in a 3D environment, a virtual environment, access any kind of media, whether it be 2D or 3D, annotate live, and then record the entire meeting. Some people may not want those meetings recorded, but that is an option to be able to refer to later. Situation assessment, another great use case. I've just come from California where there are you know, myriad fires up and down the, the state. Um, often many, many different agencies are involved in these type of tactical situations it is far more effective for the leaders in each of these factions to be able to work together, to even look at live 360 video feeds, assess what each of the responsibilities are for each department, and then deploy, as opposed to everyone kind of working and working by phone. This is a much more effective solution. Remote industrial design. Uh, of course, you know, car manufacturers have uh, long been using VR um, for design collaboration. They're always in a very, very fast kind of iterative design process, uh, often with remote design teams. So this is, again, a way to effectively work together. Uh, I work with the uh, University of California in San Diego. Uh, they actually built an entire replica of the new Bay Bridge, which connects San Francisco to East Bay, for the engineers to really be able to look at what the impact would be during a severe earthquake. And the engineers were, again, remotely able to, to swim under the water and visualize what the impact of a great earthquake would be. This would be impossible to do any other way. City planning, again, uh, for building permits to be able to look using AR, how it would impact city skyline, 
with VR, thinking about things like uh, you know, parking, traffic, what the impact of that building might be. So what this says is, again, endless opportunities to use this technology today. So how do we make an impact? What is the future of global collaboration? So one is improving healing. Uh, so if we think about physicians now, there's a lot of training being done uh, in VR. Um, doctors are able to utilize the technology to uh, look at their 3D patient scans. But what if in the future they're able to engage not just their sort of immediate medical professionals, but medical professionals from around the globe in you know, many, many different you know, uh, approaches? So Eastern medicine meets Western medicine. Think about what the impact that will have on patient care in the future. Overcoming fear, this is, uh, I, I had shared an office with the makers of the um, spider uh, arachnophobia application called Fearless, um, mainly because the developer had a fear of spiders. But then the added element of being able to have a therapist or a behavioral scientist with you in an environment, walking you through your fears, whatever your fears are. It might be public speaking, it might be fear of flying, it might be spiders, uh, heights. Uh, that has incredible benefit on, and there's been a lot of study, Stanford's been doing some studies on VR and behavioral health. This is actually one of my, I'm most passionate about education. So, when you think about being able to teach a child what it was like during the times of the Egyptians, that's just one small aspect. But if we look in the future and we think, all right, these kids who've maybe been doing a project with a sister school in China, and they've worked it all out. They have a project, they've identified a project manager, they've figured out the time difference, they're getting up early or late to Skype each other. But now, they can actually be present, and maybe there could be children from five or six or eight different countries all to together looking at a particular problem or project, working together in this sort of boundaryless environment. And then again, I'm asking you to project three or four generations in the future where the children know nothing other than collaborating globally. And, and while children can bring their cultures and their you know, intellect into this environment, they're not thinking about where they're from or what country they're from or politics. They're simply working together to solve a problem. And I think this can really have an incredible impact moving forward for future generations. And empathy, I don't know if any of you were at uh, the AWE in Santa Clara this summer, but Tom Emmerich, who was one of the co-producers of this conference, did a fantastic talk on empathy. And, and there have been some amazing studies about really how to change behaviors and help people understand you know, what it's like to have a particular situation or affliction. Um, Nepal Quake Project, uh, there's another um, amazing documentary uh, called Clouds Over Sidra. Uh, and these are opportunities for us to, to work together and solve problems and have different factions and different groups and, and groups that, that have the aid to assist you know, children of, of, you know, who are in refugee camps uh, to all work together, again, in the environment to see firsthand what it's like, but to come up with the solutions for some of these people. So what's next? The beauty of collaboration in VR is that it does have no boundaries. You can create any environment. It's about, again, being present, interacting with people from around the world. And again, not looking at what the political conflicts are, but just working together within a particular group. So I love this slide because, you know, it's a cliche, but it is true. Art imitates life, life imitates art. I mean, we all saw Iron Man, we've seen Minority Report. Um, we're here now. I don't know if any of you watch Westworld, but they you know, 3D print a body and bones. It, we're here, this is it. Somebody conceived of this one idea, and then somebody else made a creation around it and put it into a piece of entertainment. And then we see it, we believe it, we create it. And 
So if you will all humor me for one moment and just think of one idea that might help the world, something that is a problem that you think could be solved or maybe is impossible to be solved. And just take a second and, and think of what that might be. And some of you are nodding. Well, that is the seed. You've thought of it. The next step is to think, how do we solve this problem? And how do we solve these problems on a global scale without boundaries? And when we get there, then we really are at the art of the possible. So thank you for joining me today.